You're watching Bill on Bankruptcy. I'm Lee Pacquia. I'm joined now, as always, by Bloomberg News bankruptcy columnist Bill Rochelle. Be sure to go read his daily bankruptcy column. It's available on BloombergLaw.com, and it's also on the Bloomberg Terminal. Welcome. Good day. Now, Bill, you were in court this week watching the Madoff trustee go at it with the New York Attorney General. They're fighting over something like $410 million, awful lot of money. Who's going to come out on top here? Well, one thing I do know, is whoever does come out on top makes a lot of difference in who receives what out of the Madoff uh, liquidation. The whole controversy has to do with a settlement that was arranged by New York Attorney General Eric Schneiderman with a Madoff uh, feeder fund advisor named Ezra Merkin. The Madoff trustee, Irving Picard, came roaring into court saying, no, you can't do this settlement because all the money you can want to pay was stolen from Madoff customers. I should have the right to take that money and distribute it to the customers, and it should not go just to the people who were investors with the Merkin feeder funds. This argument was originally scheduled for about two weeks ago before District Judge Jed Rakoff, but then suddenly there was a notice on the court's docket that it was being adjourned. This made us believe that there, oh my goodness, must be settlement in the works, so we started calling everybody in the Western Hemisphere trying to find out if there was a settlement, because this means a lot of money mm -hmm. for the Madoff customers. And nobody would admit that there was a settlement. So I went off to court, and within a few minutes, it was evident to me that a old saying from Sigmund Freud really was applicable. Freud is alleged to have said at one time that sometimes a cigar is just a cigar. Or then actually, Lee, maybe that was the Marx Brothers. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not sure who it was who said that. Bill, so who's going to win here? Well, the, uh, the issue is going to be a real toss-up. Uh, if I had to guess, uh, I would say probably the attorney general is going to come out on top. Mm, Schneiderman, uh, why is that? Well, it's kind of like going to the racetrack and betting on ponies. When you do, you really ought to look at past performance. And if you look at past performance in this situation, you will see that more often than not, when the Madoff trustee goes into Rakoff's court, the Madoff trustee loses. Oh, <laughs> by the way, I now remember what this was about uh, uh, the quotation from the Marx Brothers. Back when I was a kid, Groucho Marx had a wonderful TV show called You Bet Your Life. Mm -hmm. It was a sort of a quiz show type thing. One day he had a woman on the show who had 12 or so kids. So Groucho says to the woman, how come you have so many children? The woman says, because I love my husband. To which Groucho says, well, I like my cigar too, but sometimes I take it out of my mouth. <laughs> All right, moving on. We have news on American Airlines. Bill, uh, AMR is in the process of obtaining approval for its merger with U.S. Airways. Um, is there anything controversial about this transaction? Well, not really about the merger itself, but there sure is about uh, some bonuses going along with it. The merger agreement calls for the outgoing American Airlines CEO, Thomas Horton, to receive a $20 million, let's call it severance bonus, when this merger becomes effective. In addition to that, millions more will be paid in bonuses over a period of time to high-level AMR executives who stay on board. The U.S. trustee, as they are wont to do in New York, did not like this one bit. She came roaring into bankruptcy court saying that these are prohibited uh, bonuses because Congress does not allow what are called retention bonuses for top officers of companies in bankruptcy. American Airlines shot back with the argument that no, that rule doesn't apply because this is not going to be paid by bankrupt American Airlines. In fact, it will be paid by a company that does not even exist yet. It will be paid after the airlines merge by the merged airlines. This, Lee, is a huge question because if American Airlines, shall we say, gets away with it, there will be now a loophole as big as you could drive a truck through mm -hmm. on the prohibition against stay bonuses for um, uh, top-level executives at bankrupt companies. Stay tuned. This is a biggie. And believe me, if the U.S. trustee loses on it, I'm pretty darn sure they're going to appeal this thing. Mm. 
And finally, a uh, really interesting item in the advance sheets. Wells Fargo won a battle, but they lost the war when uh, it was accused of contempt for violating the automatic stay in an individual's bankruptcy. Tell us about the case. Wells Fargo, uh, as you know, among other things, manages uh, or is a servicer for home mortgages, and many of their customers are in Chapter 13 bankruptcy. It turned out in the bankruptcy courts in Louisiana that uh, there were a number of instances on which Wells Fargo had been ch uh, charging people in Chapter 13 more on their home mortgages than the Chapter 13 plan called for. No, oh dear. The bankruptcy judge, uh, in lieu of holding the bank in contempt, entered an order, basically an injunction, telling them, listen here, you have to reform your procedures so this doesn't happen again. Wells Fargo thought they were very smart. They appealed. They went to the Court of Appeals in New Orleans, and they won. The circuit court said, in a case only involving uh, one bankrupt, you cannot uh, force a change in procedures. You can only do that, they said, through a class action suit. So the case went back to the bankruptcy court, and I suppose Wells Fargo might have wished uh, they hadn't done this because the bankruptcy judge slammed them with $3.2 million in punitive, punitive damages for overcharging this one bankrupt. In the process, worse perhaps than the uh, $3.2 million, the judges said that the bank's conduct was reprehensible and in another situation said that it was intentional and egregious. Mm -hmm. So I suppose there are sometimes, Lee, when it is smarter if you were a lawyer or a client to take your first beating, it may be better <laughs> than the one you get later. But this is going to go right up on appeal, right? Oh, absolutely and how's it this, will. How are the higher levels going to handle that? Absolutely it will. Uh, the federal district judge already upheld the $3.2 million uh, of uh, punitive damages. The amount is exactly 10 times what the actual damages are. And there is a good bit of uh, presidential law to the effect that punies, 10 times actual damages, are permissible. But nonetheless, you are absolutely right. This case ain't over until it goes to the circuit court. And from there, my friend, there very well might be a petition for certiorari to the U.S. Supreme Court. Man, fireworks in the Fifth Circuit. Bill, thanks for that. That's Bloomberg News Bankruptcy Columns, Bill Rochelle. If you'd like to learn more about the cases and issues we just ran through, be sure to go read his column. It's available on BloombergLaw.com and also on the Bloomberg Terminal. I'm Lee Pacquiao. Thanks for watching.